All right, so I think we're gonna move on to the next talk. So the next one will be uh, Nazim Morelli. So you go ahead and share your screen. There you go. All right, so the title is the cardiovascular disease risk begins early in males with Klein-Fetcher syndrome. Nazim, are you unmuted? Now I am unmuted. Um, thank you so much for that introduction. Um, again, I'm Nazine Morelli, and today I'm going to talk about cardiovascular disease risk beginning earlier in males with Klinefelter syndrome. Nazine, could you please turn on your video? Oh, man. Yep. Hmm. Sorry, my computer froze. Okay. Okay. If you just want to see your lovely face. <laughs> of course. Um, all right, um, so I'm gonna talk about cardiovascular disease risk beginning earlier in males with Klinefelter syndrome. And before I get started, I'd like to thank Dr. Davis, Dr. Carr, Dr. Moreau, and Dr. DuBose for all of their help on this project, as well as our funding and the Modern Human Anatomy Program. So Klinefelter syndrome, which will be referred to throughout this presentation as XXY, is a sex chromosome trisomy in which males have an extra X chromosome. This has a prevalence about what, of about one in 600 male births, and the phenotype that we are interested in is small testes and hypogonadism. Men with XXY have a higher prevalence of disorders of insulin resistance and vascular disease, and men as a whole have a higher risk of cardiovascular disease. We've seen impaired vascular outcomes in male hypogonadism and improved vascular outcomes with testosterone supplementation in men with testosterone deficiency. A previous study in adult men with Kleinfelter syndrome showed that these men have a higher cardiovascular risk and an increased carotid intima media thickness, CIMT. To our knowledge, CIMT has not been assessed in adolescents with XXY. Carotid intima media thickness, also known as CIMT, is a measure of the two innermost layers of the common carotid artery. We capture these images using ultrasound and then load them into a program to measure their thickness. Thicker carotid intima media thickness is associated with increased cardiovascular risk. All of this taken together, we, we sought out to examine carotid intima media thickness in adolescent patients with Klinefelter syndrome at the Children's Hospital Colorado. We hypothesized that adolescents with XXY, XXY will have thicker carotid intima media thickness and that CIMT will correlate with other measures of cardiometabolic health. The measures of cardiometabolic metabolic health that we chose to work with were waist circumference, BMI percentile, blood pressure, lipid panel, and blood glucose. This was a cross-sectional study of 25 adolescents with XXY, aged 12 to 17, excluding those with known diabetes and hypertension. We collected history information, performed a physical exam, and performed a fasting blood draw. We also had eight male controls from our institution, and we pulled 121 males as reference data from the literature um, to serve as external validation due to our small sample size. Carotid ultrasounds were collected using standard ultrasound protocol, and CIMT was analyzed using the carotid analyzer tool. In this image over here, we have the pink and green lines delineating out the carotid intima and media, which is that thickness that we were measuring in the program. This first table of results is just some demographics. Um, our XXY group and control groups were both similar in age and had some diversity. Within the XXY group, we had 11 individuals on testosterone treatment at the time of the study. And our control group had higher overall BMI percentile and higher rates of obesity than the XXY group. These first two graphs that we're looking at have our carotid intima media thickness of the boys with XXY in blue, comparing them both to controls and to the reference data. Um, in both of these, we found that the XXY boys had significantly higher carotid intima media thickness than what they were being compared to. Looking at our correlations with cardiometabolic health and carotid intima media thickness, we did not find any significant correlation with waist circumference, BMI percentile, systolic blood pressure or diastolic blood pressure. We then calculated pulse pressure by taking our systolic blood pressure minus our diastolic blood pressure. We did find this to be significantly correlated with carotid intima media thickness. We also looked at a lipid panel. We did not find any significant correlation of carotid intima media thickness with cholesterol, triglycerides, LDL, or HDL. And lastly, the last measure in our blood draw was a fasting blood glucose. We did find this to be significantly correlated with carotid intima media thickness. 
because at the time of our study, we had about half the cohort of boys with XXY on testosterone treatment. We performed a sensitivity analysis split by testosterone treatment status. Comparing it to CIMT, we did not find any differences in carotid intima media thickness based on testosterone treatment. To summarize, um, in adolescents with XXY, we found CIMT to be thicker than expected for their age compared to both the reference data and the control group. This is consistent with the previous adult study I mentioned earlier in this presentation. And I'd like to note that our sample was young and not particularly obese. As a reminder, carotid intima media thickness was that marker that we were using for cardiovascular risk. Um, CIMT did not consistently correlate with our other measures of cardiometabolic health. Um, we found it to be significantly correlated with pulse pressure and fasting blood glucose, but none of the other measures that we looked at. And we did not find testosterone treatments to appear to affect carotid intima media thickness. Some strengths of this study was that it was novel and when possible, our CIMT images were taken in multiple positions. This allows us to maintain our sample size to be as large as possible because in order to be able to even measure CIMT, we have to have high enough image quality for the program to pick up all of the images. So having a backup allows us to use it, maintain having a patient in the sample if they ended up having a first image that was not taken well. Some limitations of this study was that we did have a small sample size and some high variability. We also did not have control over the testosterone treatment type that the boys who were on testosterone treatment had. Some of them were on injections and some of them were on gels. We also didn't have control over patient adherence to their own testosterone treatment. In the future, we'd like to compare CIMT to matched male controls of different ages. We'd like to look at a larger sample size and longitudinal assessment. And because we did find significance in adolescence, for thicker carotid intima media thickness, we'd like to look at CIMT at a younger age. That is all I have for you today. Thank you so much. I can take any questions. Thank you, Nazi. Uh, great presentation. We do have a few questions. Uh, so let's see. First question, do you think N of 8 for your control was sufficient for your study? So N of 8 is a little bit small. Um, we worked with what we had, but that's why we pulled some of the external validation from the literature of healthy adolescents. Excellent. Thanks. Um, and then any thoughts on comparing XXY data with XX data? Um, could that potentially go into a little bit more detail? Um, I mean, that's... Could, could you read the question again? Yeah, any thoughts on comparing XXY data with XX data? I think the oh. thought is, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know if that's really something that, we haven't looked at it yet. Um, I think we're looking more with comparing it to XY just because that's falling within the same sex, but we could potentially look at that. And one final question. Uh, did you adjust for overall body size when measuring the CIMT? So we did not because some of the other literature was looking at um, obesity and XX, uh, obesity and CIMT. And we actually found that there was like a trend of increased carotid intima media thickness with following rates of obesity. And so for us to even have found significance with our control group having higher rates of obesity, um, perhaps when we're matched, we may find even greater significance. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, answers and thank you for the questions. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to our next presenter. Great work, Nazim.